has not heard the word emulsion. From childhood, most have associated it with a milky medicine got from the chemist and thought no more about it. If we shake a solid like sand in water, we notice that the sand particles soon settle out. If, however, we mix a little mud with water, the solid particles do not settle for some considerable time, but give us a very dirty milk. Is this, then, an emulsion? No, it's not. It's a suspension of solid in liquid. An emulsion is defined as being a suspension of liquid in liquid. By dropping paraffin oil into water and suitably agitating, which is all that the air bubbles are doing here, we create such a liquid suspension of large globules of paraffin in water. But it will be noticed that in this case, the oil soon separates from the water, as did the sand, to form a separate layer. If, however, we agitate our oil in a dilute soap solution, we get a mixture of quite different appearance. The globules of oil are much smaller, and no separation of oil and water takes place when the agitation stops. An emulsion, then, consists of a system of two liquids, in which one of the liquids is dispersed as minute globules in the other. To be a permanent emulsion, the dispersed liquid must remain more or less indefinitely in suspension. If the two liquids are miscible, like water and alcohol, we get a true solution. If the parent liquids are clear and transparent, the resulting mixture will be similar. By examining under the microscope the suspension of mud in water, it clearly shows itself to consist of the solid particles suspended throughout a transparent liquid. An examination of the opaque paraffin oil and water emulsion shows the latter as a clear meshwork in which are suspended globules of oil. Some globules are seen to enlarge as others coalesce with them. The oil is slowly separating out. As we've noted, the dispersed globules must remain in suspension more or less permanently if the system is to be considered an emulsion. One important factor that prevents the separation is the size of the dispersed globules. In a good emulsion, the globules have a diameter of one hundred thousandth of a centimetre. Here on the screen you have a magnification of approximately one quarter million times. This is a cod liver oil emulsion. Natural emulsions have similar characteristics. Milk is such an example. The permanence of the dispersion is helped by a third component known as the emulsifying agent. In artificial emulsions, this usually has to be added. In nature, it's already present. This emulsion, milk, is quite stable. Among the best-known emulsifying agents are soaps, Irish moss, gum arabic, sulfonated fatty alcohols, gelatine, starch, albumin, proteins, synthetic detergents and wetting agents, and certain fine powders like alumina. Emulsions being, as we've said, dispersions of one liquid in another, it follows that there can be two types of emulsion with any two liquids. For example, water may be dispersed in oil or vice versa. Which type of emulsion is produced depends largely on the emulsifying agent. Magnesia in water plus oleic acid in paraffin produces a water in oil emulsion. Soda in the water produces an oil in water emulsion. In general, emulsifying agents which are predominantly soluble in water promote oil in water emulsions and vice versa. It is frequently possible to produce an inversion by the addition of suitable emulsifying agents to an existing emulsion. Here, a water in oil emulsion is inverted. After the initial surface tension currents have come to rest, the oil appears as large floating globules dispersed in water. Being an unstable emulsion, they are rapidly coalescing. The amount of one liquid that may be dispersed in another can be very high. It can be shown mathematically that if the dispersed globules are spherical and of the same size, the maximum possible amount of dispersion is 74% of the total, whatever the size of the globule. 
If large ball bearings fill a cylinder to the 100 mark and an equal volume of water is added, the water is displaced to the 155 mark, showing that the ball bearings occupy 55% of the 100 cc volume. The same displacement results from smaller but also uniform sized ball bearings. The narrowness of the cylinder cuts down the figure demanded by theory. A mixture of bearings of different sizes, however, displaces the water to the 180 mark, showing that in this case more of the original 100 space is taken up by the ball bearings or globules, since the smaller ones fill in the gaps. In actual emulsions, higher percentages of dispersion can be achieved, since the globules not only vary in size, but they can also be packed closer together by distorting their shape. Emulsions have been made in which 99 parts of one liquid have been dispersed in one part of another. As more globules are packed in, the dispersing medium is squeezed out, until finally we're left with a mass of globules of all shapes and sizes, with no dispersing medium between. They finally coalesce into one homogeneous liquid. The breaking up of a volume of oil into millions of little globules means that the surface area is enormously increased. Every time a globule breaks up into eight smaller ones, the surface area is doubled. When the number of droplets becomes nearly 2,000 million, the total surface area becomes 6,000 square centimetres, or 1,242 times the original. This graph shows how the surface area increases with decreasing diameter of droplet. The surface of a liquid acts as though it were covered by an invisible membrane. This can be shown simply by floating a needle in water. The surface tension is strong enough to counteract the gravitational force. Addition of alcohol decreases the surface tension. The needle sinks. Again, the effect and variation of surface tension may be shown by causing a surface of alcohol to make contact with a balanced platinum wire loop. The surface exerts a positive pull on the wire, causing the balance to deflect. If now water, whose surface tension is greater than that of alcohol, is brought into contact with a similar platinum loop on the opposite side of the balance, the needle sways back in the other direction. This invisible membrane exists not only between liquids and air, but at an interface between one liquid and another. Here we have cod liver oil floating on water. By pushing down a ring of platinum wire, we can make visible the membrane by detaching it on the ring. The tension in this case is called interfacial tension. To promote emulsification, that is the breaking up of one liquid into globules in another, one must reduce this interfacial tension. This is the function of the emulsifying agent and may be shown simply by the size of drops formed when oil drips from two similar tubes into water and soap solution respectively. The drops formed in the water are visibly larger than those formed in the soap solution. This is due to the effect of the soap in reducing the interfacial tension. The emulsifying agent must also produce a suitable new film around the globules. Emulsifying agents achieve their effect by combining in their molecules a water-seeking or hydrophilic portion and an oil-seeking or lipophilic portion. This portion has an aversion for water and is thus hydrophobic as well. When such an agent is dissolved in water, the molecules tend to crowd to the surface and arrange themselves with their hydrophobic ends sticking out. When an oil is shaken with the water, some molecules of the emulsifying agent crowd to the new surfaces and their lipophilic ends stick into or dissolve in the oil and thus tie the drops of oil to the surrounding water. Also, generally speaking, if the emulsifying agent is more soluble in water than in oil, it promotes oil in water emulsions and vice versa. Stability of emulsions may sometimes be increased by dissolving emulsifying agents separately in the oil and the water, a 
and thus getting a double locking action. In addition, they form a membrane surrounding the globules, hindering their coalescence. Another thing which keeps the globules from coalescing is the fact that they are electrically charged and thus tend to repel one another. The charge arises from absorption of ions and from the fact that the emulsifying agent itself may be ionized. That the globules are indeed charged can be shown by passing a current through an emulsion when the globules move towards the electrodes and the emulsion breaks down. This is demonstrated microscopically when the triangular pole on the left is positively charged by connecting to a battery. The making of an emulsion then, given our two liquids and suitable emulsifying agents, consists in supplying work to break up the initial surface tensions. Daily in the kitchen this is done by a simple mechanical contrivance. We've already seen this done simply by bubbling air through solutions. Emulsions can also be made by precipitation, a solution of the oil in a solvent being dropped into water. The solvent dissolves in the water, but the oil doesn't. In the laboratory, the liquids may be subjected to high speed, that is ultrasonic, sound vibrations. Here we see an emulsion being made of mercury in water by this means. A tube containing the mercury and water is inserted in a bath of oil vibrating at high speed. These latter methods are of scientific rather than practical interest. Industrial methods of making emulsions always employ a mechanical action. This usually involves high speed stirring in a confined space, which is equivalent to grinding the two liquids up into minute particles. Another method is to force a coarse mixture of the liquids through a very fine orifice. Industrially, the process is known as homogenizing. The mixture of liquids passes through an orifice about two thousandths of an inch wide between a fixed and revolving wall, rotating at about five to ten thousand revs per minute. To make four hundred gallons per hour, such machines require about thirty horsepower, and such machines must be turning to capacity, for whole spheres of our industrial and domestic life and vitality depend upon the manufacture of stable emulsions. Pre-mixing various oils and water, homogenizing and then cooling on vast revolving drums, gives us the domestic margarine for the nation's food supply. Emulsions are distributed throughout the land as sprays to preserve our crops. Bitumastic emulsions provide us with floors and building materials. Similar emulsions dress and strengthen the surfaces of our roads. Latex, the emulsion of rubber, is the basis of our transport, our waterproofing, our electrical insulation. In medicine, the uses of emulsions are countless. They help to ensure the nation's health. Emulsions are dispersed then, in the framework of living, as are their own globules in their surrounding media. Thank you.